What's up, everybody? Thanks for checking out this video from TurningPointMusic.net. This will be the first of many, many free training videos that I'll be posting on YouTube for your education and enjoyment. My background, I was a, the director of education for Pyramind. Check out P-Y-R-A-M-I-N-D.com. They're a premier audio training facility in San Francisco. But more importantly, check out my website, TurningPointMusic.net, and if you ever have any ideas for any training videos you want, I specialize in mastering, mixing, Pro Tools, guitar, studio consulting, gear. I'm working harder on Ableton, so as I get better and better with that, I'll post videos on that as well. But today, I thought I would dig into one of my favorite subjects, which is parallel compression, just to start out. So I'm going to use the drum tracks from one of my recent tracks. If you want to check out, check out the track itself... You can see turningpointmusic.net, go to listen, and then this song Slow is the track from which I've isolated the drums here in my Pro Tools session. So here are the drums, and there's no parallel compression or anything set up just yet. So here are just some of the drums. So I layer drums a lot, and there's a lot we could dig into here, but I don't want to go too deep, too far. I just want to focus just on parallel compression and keep this short and sweet. So with all these tracks, we've got a couple of kicks, a couple of snares, hats, rides, overheads, all this stuff. The idea of parallel compression. Well, parallel compression obviously is a little bit deeper than plain old series compression, but the idea is that with parallel compression, you have an uncompressed signal over here and a very compressed signal over here, and you can blend them together and get sort of the best of both worlds in that you have the sharp transients of the uncompressed material along with the gooey, thick, syrupy, compressed stuff that you mix together. So you can get, a, the, like I say, the best of both worlds. So with drums, the way I like to do it is to just set up a return that we're going to compress. So in other words, what I'm going to do, I'm going to go shift command N, command right, command down, and make a stereo, a stereo aux. Let's move that over here. And I'm going to call this drum pair. And now <clears throat> looking at my other tracks, just a little bit, I should tell you before we do anything else, all these little bit darker brownish tracks, they're all sent out to this aux. So they are just kind of all the roomy sort of sound. So if these are all solo saved. Don't trip on that if you don't know quite what that means yet. But let me solo just, <laughs> let me solo save myself. Now let me just solo all these guys. So you can hear that's sort of just a roomy-ish sound. But the point is, all those outputs are coming over here to this return. So if I were going to send that to the drum parallel compression, I wouldn't probably send these individuals. I would send just this guy. And then over here, all these more orange tracks, these are all my main drum tracks. So if I'm setting up parallel compression, I'm probably not, I'm probably not going to necessarily end up putting everything in it, but I might just set up the send for everything and then make my choices. I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to click on, kick low, I'm going to shift click over to new crash two, and then I'm going to command click on this return. So those are the tracks that I want to select that I might send into the drum parallel compression. I'm going to hold shift option for apply to selected, and then on any one of these sends up here, I'm going to go track drum pair. So now you can see all those tracks got that send to that return. Now, still holding shift option for apply to select it, I'm going to click FMP, which is follow main pan. So now you can see all these grayed out and then they're following the pan of the track, which means in our parallel compression return, we're going to get that same panning and that's what we want. We want it to mirror what's going on in the session itself. So then with parallel compression, I usually like to send mostly kick, snare, and hats. So what I'm going to do it first, well, I almost forgot something. I want to still hold shift option and click the little P for pre-fader send. Now, pre-fader send means that this level right here is not linked to this. 
So pre and post fader sends, you're usually doing a post fader sends for something like reverb where you turn the track up and down and you want the send to go along with it. A pre fader send is something where it's unlinked and you're being more creative, something like parallel compression. So if you're not with that yet, don't trip. Just worry about, okay, little P is blue. It's a pre fader send and that's what we want for now. So then <clears throat> we haven't really done anything yet. Let me unsolo this. We've just, we're just getting set up. Now let me hit play again. So that's our plain old drum track. And I know I want to bring out some snare and some kick and maybe a little bit of hats. That's mostly what I want to make more punchy in this. So I'm going to solo the drum parallel for a minute. I also know I'm going to want to push it up the middle a little bit. So I'm going to click link and invert and then do this. So about to 50, 50. <clears throat> I also know I'm going to do a high pass on this. Use any old EQ you got. I'm just going to use the standard Avid EQ here just to prove it doesn't matter. So I'm going to high pass it around 120. That's just a starting place. You can adjust it based on your track and just what sounds good to you, but around 120 ish. Good place to start. Close enough. So then after that, I know I'm going to use a compressor. So I'm going to use this 4030 from McDSP just because I dig it. I'm going to go fast release. I'm going to leave the attack medium and I'm going to pull this threshold way down, even though we're not hearing it yet. We, I know I'm just going to hit it pretty hard, so I'm going to pull that down. So let's get that out of the way, and we'll come back to our tracks. So like I said, I know I'm going to do kick, snare, and hats. Now experiment, do what you want, but I don't want to go too deep. I want to keep this digestible and quick. So right now if I hit play, I'm going to hear nothing because we soloed our drum parallel. And now you don't want to do too much while you're soloed. It's on an island, so to speak, but I can start bringing in Oh, that's my kick low. I don't want that one. Okay, so there's a little bit of my kick. Now you might be thinking it sounds wimpy. Well, that's sort of the point. I don't want to bring more bass through my parallel compression. We'll talk a lot more about bass in other videos, but the best way to have lots of bass is to just have one element down in your bass area. So parallel compression with drums, not about getting more bass. It's about getting more punch and more snap up the middle. So that kind of wimpy sounding kick, that's exactly what I want. So now let's bring in one of my snares. And notice I have a bunch of snares. I probably won't bring them all in. I would just choose the sound of which one I like the most. And remember, we're only hearing the parallel compression right now, and then we'll add it back into everything else. Bring in a little bit of hats. And just a little tip, if you are if you want a little bit finer resolution, command drag on these little faders or on these big faders and it'll it'll slow it down. So just like that, I've created a parallel compression return. You can see, and again, that's all we're hearing right now. That's what we're hearing, right? So if you want to try that in your track and then bring it into the mix, really good way to do it is to Unsolo it, turn it all the way down so you're basically where you were before you had any parallel compression. Play your track and then ease it in. I think that's an amazing difference even soloed here, but when you have a whole mix going on in all your other instruments, your bass and keys and synths and whatever else, this can really help you fine tune your drums and get them to sit just right in the mix. So that's it. That's the concept. That's the idea. You can certainly do this with other things as well, but I thought drums would be a great place to start. Thanks for checking it out. Hit me with any questions. Thanks.